Hey everyone, I'm back and it's time for another Animal Facts video. As you can see, I have a tarantula with me today. Uh, before I get started on that tarantula, I want you to hit that subscribe button. I want you to like this video. I want you to share it. Spread the word around because I love teaching people about animals. Uh, it is absolutely amazing. I am so glad I get to do this. So we'll get right to it because I'm not going to do one of those long like three minute intros like other videos do. Just hit the subscribe button and tell people. With me today is Dolly Parton. Dolly Parton is an Arizona blonde tarantula. Now, Arizona blondes are one of the larger tarantulas that we find here in the United States. As their name indicates, they are from Arizona. Uh, they're also found in other parts of the Southwest and even into Mexico. Uh, they're sometimes called the Mexican blonde tarantula or desert tarantula. Now, you're probably wondering why I have my hand in front of her. Is she gonna bite me? Is she gonna envenomate me? Is she gonna kill me? In written history, no one's died from a tarantula bite. Their LD50 is way too low. The LD50 is lowest dose per 50 mice that a venom can kill somebody. Um, with tarantulas, it's exceptionally low. It's a lot like a bee sting, but heavier load. Um, basically, if you're allergic to bees, these guys will have some effect on you. You're gonna have to take antihistamines. You might even need an EpiPen. Most likely not. It's just gonna be a lot of pain uh, and a lot of localized swelling. Uh, if you're not allergic to those things, you could still have a plethora of symptoms, but it is gonna vary from person to person. You don't really have to worry about the biting though. First of all, their primary defense is camouflage. You'll notice that she's got some rustic colors on there, along with like some yellowish browns, tans, beiges. Um, there's even some black on there. In her desert environment, camouflage is the number one thing. You'll hardly ever really see a tarantula out in the wild especially big bodied ones like this because they dig burrows and they're gonna be living in those burrows. In the winter time, they'll use their silk-like webbing and they'll take rocks, sticks, leaf litter, whatever, line their burrows and pack it with it so they don't freeze during the winter. And then during the summer, they'll use that same type of silk to basically set traps outside of their, their burrow. Basically, something steps on it, it can send a signal down them, let them know if there's possible danger and or a food item outside. At nighttime, a lot of those uh, tensile uh, silk lines tend to break. Uh, we're not really quite sure why. Most likely it has to do with hunting mechanisms. But as far as the fence goes, aside from the camouflage, what you're gonna be looking at is urticating hairs. So you can see these hair-like structures all over her abdomen that then stop at her cephalothorax. So those hairs, when put under a microscope, are reverse barbed, almost kind of like a fish hook. And so what she's going to do is if I were a predator and I'm going after her, she's gonna take her back legs and flick those hairs off into my eyes, my nose, my mouth. So say you're a small mammal, you start blinking, those tiny urticating hairs start breaking apart and they get stuck all in the eyes and cause swelling so they can't see. They get in the nasal passages, make it so it's hard to breathe. They get in the mouth, makes it hard to swallow. At this point, she's just gonna go back to her burrow and hide. That's her main defense mechanism. She doesn't want to go out and actively try to bite things because that's her main defense other than the urticating hairs. If the urticating hairs didn't work, she's then got to try to bite. And that's going to be hard on a larger uh, larger uh, animal than her. Sorry, I'm tripping over my words today. Um, also, her digestive fluids are in her venom. She doesn't want to go just randomly envenomating things because then she's losing those digestive fluids. It takes energy to build all those back up. So it becomes a waste if she's not gonna bother eating that, that animal. So really, biting just really isn't in the, the rapport for these guys. Oh, I just lost my lights, cool. Gives you a better look at her though, so I'm actually perfectly fine with that. Um, now, tarantulas also have these hair-like structures running along their legs that you can see. Uh, those hair-like structures help them with basically what I call spidey sense. Uh, we all know, like reading the comics and watching the movies, that Spider-Man has his Peter Tingle, his Spidey Sense, things that alert him to danger. With tarantulas, those can help with everything from wind change and temperature change to picking up pheromones and even electrostatic activity. So essentially, my hand moving closer, she can detect the electricity running through my body, but there's a barometric pressure change between my hand and her, and also heat radiating off of me, and then there's also the wind. You see she keeps putting her legs out towards me and she's trying to find a new place to step. But she knows that something's out there. Now, tarantulas do walk kind of funny. You'll watch them kind of put a foot down and lift it up, put the foot down, walk again. They do have a certain sense of smell with their feet. So they are kind of detecting things as they're going along. 
Now, she does have eyes. There's a set of compound eyes on her top of her uh, carapace here. You can kind of see them. Really, there's a primary and secondary, but their main function is to determine light refraction. So um, basically, it's shadow movement. If a predator is coming overhead, it's gonna cause a shadow. She knows it's there because those eyes are detecting the shadow movement there. Now, tarantulas can be handleable. Uh, she's used to being handled. She's 22 years old. We've had her for a while. Um, her previous owners had her for a while. Once you understand tarantula body language, it's okay to handle them. I just don't recommend it being a regular thing. Now, if you feel comfortable with it and it's a tarantula that you've owned and you understand the possible repercussions, um, you know, that's, that's up to you. I've handled Dolly here quite a few times. I'm giving her her own time to basically walk over to my hand if she feels like it. I'm not pressuring her to do so. She decides she doesn't want to, she'll just back up and go back up on the log. But I do like to take something out like this piece of cork bark that's in her enclosure so she has a bit of familiarity um, and kind of like basically a safe space while I have her out. Um, every tarantula keeper is going to have their own tips and tricks on how they handle, what they recommend and everything else. This is just what I was taught. Uh, this is why I found this uh, work for me. I've been handling tarantulas uh, for close to 20 years now. This is the method that always really worked well for me. If I don't feel comfortable with the tarantula, I don't pick it up. There's no need to. I don't want them to be stressed out. I don't want them to stress me out. Um, I'm never going to do something with an animal on this channel that jeopardizes their safety um, and also like their mental well-being. There's no reason ever to stress an animal out. Um, that means making snakes strike, making tarantulas flick hairs or flare up and show you their fangs. This isn't that type of channel. This channel is here for education. So with that, I hope you enjoyed learning about Dolly Parton here, as it looks like she's finally gonna climb onto my hand. All right, halfway on. Uh, again, if you're new to this channel, all this is for educational purposes. I'm just trying to instill some of the knowledge I've picked up. I may not be right on everything. I can admit to that. If you've got some tips and tricks or some knowledge you wanna drop, go ahead and throw it in the comments. The only way I ever delete anything out of the comments if it's derogatory or trying to start fights. Really, uh, with me, I believe that knowledge is better with animals and we can all learn from one another. So I hope you enjoyed this week's animal facts video. Um, I will be back next week with another animal. I don't know yet. I actually just kind of uh, wing it week to week. You've also probably noticed that sometimes I stutter or sometimes I uh, trip over my words or forget what I'm saying. That's because I love doing my videos in one take. Uh, it's not that I don't want to edit them. Uh, for kids watching, and even for you adults, if you're a little self-conscious, I just want people to be aware that it's completely okay to, to make mistakes. Um, and it's just as long as you correct them, you can just move on from it. So it's something I try to teach my daughter all the time. Uh, she wants to be stubborn and think that she can't be wrong. It is okay to be wrong. It's okay to make mistakes. So hope you guys learned a little bit about Arizona Blonde Tarantulas, and we'll see you next week.